Hey, uh, welcome back to part two of this series where I create my own keyboard from scratch. Today, I want to get started with the assembly and hopefully finish the whole build. So let's grab a coffee or a kombucha or whatever you like to drink and let's get started. Last time I stopped with the routing in KiCad and this time I want to show you how to uh, create the Gamma files, order everything and yeah, then let's get started with the build and hopefully I did not make any mistakes. So last time I stopped with the creation of the Gerber file. So we have the KiCad file here. Then uh, we can create the Gamma files and see everything uploaded. So the Gamma files are basically the files that the PCB producer will use to print your PCB. In my case, it was PCB Ways, and thank you PCB Ways for sponsoring this video. They provided me the PCBs and we will unpack them after the, I showed you how to order them. So we have all the routing ready. So the first thing is we go to File, Fabrication Outputs, GABA Files, and we select the folder we want to uh, create the GABA Files to. We select the folder and then we uh, make sure that the folder is empty and then we generate the drill files. So we leave it as is, generate drill files, then we plot and we have all the files in there. So let's see, we have the avocado, uh, I created a new folder for it, the avocado YouTube and here are all the files that we need. So the different layers and we need to zip it. After we zipped it, we go to PCB Ways. Thank you again for sponsoring. So we go there and we click click order the PCB, add the file, select the zip file and it's successfully detected and it will show us the price, it will show us the file, how it will look like and then we have to select what we want to do, uh, the panels, how many different design uh, on the panel and yeah, you, so you go through it. I basically leave it as is the solder mask. So here you can select the colors. Um, you can have like black. This one is pretty nice. I selected black matte because it's even nicer. Uh, so it's a matte finish instead of the uh, shiny finish, but also it's a bit more expensive. And then you can select the silk screen between white and yellow. We will see that as well. So it's basically the, the letters on the screen or on the PCB and then the finish. I leave it as the normal LED one and then you just click save to cart and you agree and then you can go through the order and then you basically give it to uh, someone who will order it and in the end uh, you can order the PCBs. And as you can see I already have some delivered so let's look at the PCBs that I got delivered from PCB Waste and then let's get started. All right first things first this one, uh, it's the Skeletal. It's my current daily driver. If you're interested in it, just take a look at the other videos uh, I created about it. Let's take a look at the PCB order. I already opened it up. So here we get the PCB itself, a few stickers, and I also ordered a bottom plate and a plate for the uh, key switches. So yeah. Basically, we have all the PCBs, uh, all the PCB parts I need and hopefully I did not mess up with the routing. So here, this is the uh, switch plate for the MX switches because I ordered MX switches and look at the, at the design. I really enjoy the matte plate with the silver on it. You can see the white silk screen and let's open the actual PCB. And here we have it. I really enjoy the color of the little avocado. I put it in silver top layer so you can see it's shining. And it's also the, the name is here on and you see all the routes and yeah, it looks actually really good. Uh, you can see the fingerprints, <laughs> but yeah, it looks really, really nice. So the, the process of ordering at PCB Waste and the whole PCB itself, amazing quality. Um, it is the first time for me that I ordered a PCB and I designed one. So yeah, I was positively surprised. They sent it to me super fast. The one thing I did mess up, so it's not PCB's fault, but here you can see Pro Micro, the letters are cut off 
this was definitely my fault because I checked it in the uh, KiCad file. It was shown there and yeah, I messed up with the design. And also something I messed up with was the ordering of the batteries. They had actually arrived in two months and this is due to the regulations. So you cannot fly batteries on its own to Germany. Uh, that's why you have to ship them and shipping takes forever. So that's why I cannot just mount the bottom plates on it. I printed myself a battery holder case. So this will be my case where a big battery will fit in and this will then be the parts until I get the real batteries. It fits in just fine. Yep, fits in. And yeah, it looks also quite nice. And if you have both sides, it's also quite easy to transport because they can like put together like this and you have a little angle when you type. So let's see how this turns out. I just printed it and designed it and hopefully it will work out in the end. So I ordered the rest of AliExpress. Um, let's take a look. We have the battery connectors. Pro Micro 1, 2, I hope I am. Um, it should be three because I am always afraid that I burn one. Ah, uh, yeah, the most important part, the Akku Cream Blue switches. Uh, these one I really, really enjoy typing on. I have have them in the skeletal, and these are just amazing switches. Yeah, looks perfect. Nice. The black keycaps. I ordered the DSA ones. Parts for the battery connector. And again, parts for the battery connector. Ah, yeah, the M2 screws, the M2 standoffs, the reset switches, the on-off switches. Ah, yes, perfect. And these are the diodes. So yeah, here we have everything. First things first, uh, I need to solder on all the diodes. Yeah, basically we need just to solder on everything on this PCB. First thing, I need to figure out which side to bridge because I have a hot swappable board that also always puts the nice nano up or the pro micro so the idea is that either th either side you have the pro micro on here and it looks like this but also on the other side so it should be like this on both sides yeah let, let's figure out how to solder them on and i see i messed up with the amount of pins the pro micro has one more and i think i have the top one as the battery one and hopefully i did not mess up because i am currently a bit afraid that i messed it up and it needs to be like this and not like this but yeah let's check it let's open the file uh, all right, I have already my first learnings. I should have printed on the direction how the diodes should be soldered on there. And uh, the second thing is how to bridge the soldering points on which side um, I have to figure out as well. So we take a look at the top left and here you can see it's B minus. I want to have B minus on the top left. Ah, and also I printed it on right side jump here left side jump here so it should be the the bottom one so it should be the side on the lower part because this is the left side and uh, for the left hand it's on this side so i should uh, bridge these but i still will check it with um, measuring it through to be sure so yesterday i got as far as soldering everything together so here's the first part of the uh, keyboard. So I already ordered the wrong standoff. So I need to reorder some standoffs to make it a bit more tight. And uh, now I want to add the battery, add the keycaps, uh, the software, and then hopefully it works completely. So let's grab a kombucha and uh, yeah, take out the, the batteries out of the drill. And yeah, let me show you where I get my battery from. So I have this old Bosch uh, drill, this old Bosch power drill. Yeah, the drill is broken. I got already a new one and that's why I will take out the battery um, for yeah my parts basically. Because they use internally the 18650 batteries. So let's open up this battery bag um, and get out the batteries to solder it inside my keyboard. It's quite a messy workspace, 
since uh, I did not clean it up yesterday evening. Um, and always be careful with charged battery packs. So there is still a lot of energy in there. And here we have it, four of these cells. And as I said, be careful and I directly mess up. So we have four cells in here. Uh, let's cut them loose. Cut the connectors off. And since I have no spot welding, I will just solder on the charging management system onto the battery, put it in here and then hopefully connect the battery correctly. I assembled now everything, uh, soldered it together and this is the final product. Let me show you. It looks amazing. Uh, I did a few mistakes, I would say. So first of all, I ordered the wrong standoffs. As you can see here, they are way too high. So the idea is to order new standoffs that are lower, or I will order them that are way, way lower, like uh, three millimeters or something. Uh, they are too high. The second thing I did was a bit of a design mistake, I would say. So as you can see here, the fingers for the thumb are quite far apart. So next time I would maybe put them a bit closer together, like the other keys, uh, that the outer thumb is not as far as uh, now. That maybe would look a bit better. What I really like is the design of the PCB. So the matte finish is amazing. And as you can see here, the avocado is in the silver. It glows really nice. Um, yeah, I really enjoy the little avocado on it. And thanks again for PCB ways. It looks amazing, the, the PCB. And the software, this part I will show you now how to put on the software on the microcontroller to like use it. I'm using the Mirioku layout. So basically I'm using the exact same software as for my Skeletor. Uh, the only difference is the pinouts. If you're interested in how to configure the ZMK that it is running on your microcontroller, let me know down in the description. I can create a more in-depth video for the ZMK parts, but let me show you how to put the software on this one now. Let's take another zip from the kombucha and get started. So we open the Avocado GitHub profile or in this case, my GitHub profile. And as you can see, I just copied over it. Uh, this one is basically the origin of my design or the base of my design. Um, and I have to update the readme as well. So it's currently it's uh, his pictures still in it. So we go to actions and here you can see I did a lot of mistakes, but the last one is working. And then this is running through and we get the firmware. Basically, we have to download it, um, unzip it, and then it's really, really easy. You put a USB-C cable in the computer, uh, double click on the reset button directly while booting. It will go into the USB mode and to just drag and drop the software on the MCU. And then you get an error message that it didn't work. Uh, so the unexpected error happened, could not copy, whatever. There's like multiple errors. and in the first time, first time doing it, I was super scared that it didn't work and I tried it again and again and again, but it worked. So basically uh, it is copying it over, but then it shows you the error that it couldn't copy over, but it is copied over. So yeah, just drop it on the, on the MCU and you're done. Uh, yeah, and then you just do the same for the left side as well, and then you can use it. I put in the battery already, so you can first try it with USB. So I already put on the software. Um, it's already ready and uh, it sh seems to work. And man, I was so expecting so many errors. I was extremely surprised when it just worked. So this was my first PCB design. The first time I'm uh, writing some ErgoGen code, the first time designing and in KiCad, uh, drag and drop this stuff, creating my own uh, parts for the PCB, like the own uh, yeah, images on it. Uh, the first time drawing all the connections between the PCBs and the pads and stuff. So all the routing. And I honestly, I expected at least 10 errors or something. So I was really expecting it not to work. And when I plugged everything in and it just worked, I was like crazy, 
crazy it worked um i am so happy and so surprised that it worked and yeah if you are interested in the pcb i will link it uh, in the github uh, it is public already so if you want to order it on pcb ways or wherever you can just download the keycard file and uh, the i will also upload the ergo uh, the gamma files so you can just directly drag and drop the zip file from gamma to pcb ways and uh, order the pcb right away and if you are, want also the switch plate and the bottom plate uh, i think the switch plate is quite helpful for like putting in the switches and keeping everything in place because I don't have one for my corn keyboard and it sometimes get a little flimsy. The keys get a bit uh, loose because it's also hot swappable. So you can just pull the keys out and then it gets a bit, yeah. I I prefer uh, either soldered it in or use the key, uh, the switch holder. I did both. Uh, next time I probably will do it also hot swappable to change the switches if I want to. Let's do some uh, monkey type and see how fast am I. Not as fast, but first time typing on it, 53 words per minute. I think it's fine. My average is, as you can see, around 60, uh, 60 to 70. So it's not super fast, um, but yeah, fast enough for me for my daily work. I need definitely some training on the types, uh, typing on it. Uh, I still have a few mistypes. One thing I will add is the bumper ball here as well. So uh, this is my signature. Um, keyboard thing that I have like a little ball in the index finger to like find the key position perfectly. Um, yeah, but I'm happy and positively surprised that this keyboard is working. Uh, and let me show you the sound of it. And in comparison to the corn keyboard, So these are the brown switches. So for me, they are very smushy, washy. So I don't feel like the the point where they uh, trigger and it feels a bit, yeah, not as good, I would say. The sound of the Akko Cream Blue, they for me are way better. And they feel also really good. I'm extremely happy with the result of the keyboard. Um, if you want to build one yourself, I will link everything in GitHub. And yeah, you can just right away build it yourself. Uh, have fun. Let me know in the descriptions what you think about the keyboard. Let me know what you would like to change or what you would have done differently. Uh, also, one mistake I did was I ordered the wrong reset button. So the reset button is a bit too small for the uh, footprint it works but still it was very close yeah let me know down in the descriptions what your thoughts are if you would like to build this one as well uh, what you would have done differently and if you are interested in any details of the build thank you for watching see you next time happy coding and happy typing